Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to Crossroads. If you're visiting with us, sure, welcome. Glad that you're here on this uh, wonderful uh, morning, f- celebrating the 4th of July um, here. I, uh, Chris, if you'd bring up that first slide for me there. Um, we're starting, I'm going to just this morning kick off kind of just briefly, being the 4th of July, entering into our new series that we'll start next week. Are you ready? We'll be looking at the Olivet Discourse, what Jesus had to say about the end times, and then moving into the first part of the book of Revelation, the Jesus' letters, what he had to say to the church. And uh, so I hope you'll join us for that. We're excited about diving into this um, the Word of God. And this morning, we're going to be in Matthew 24, to kick things off. If you have your Bible, you want to open up there. Um, I forgot to actually put it on the screen, so you're just going to have to listen well this morning. And I have just a few things. Being the 4th of July this morning, I want to look at this idea of independence or dependence, knowing that we gather here as a nation, right, to celebrate this morning um, our independence as such, right, and uh, to celebrate, to honor those who have fought, who have given their lives for our freedom as a nation. Um, we celebrate right around the country what happened, right? The forming of this nation, this wonderful place that we call home in our nation, the United States, where we experience a level of freedom, folks, that has never been experienced in the history of the world. We also, in this place, we are celebrating now a level of affluence that no time ever in the history of the world have people experienced the level of affluence that we are experiencing today. But I want to take this a little deeper this morning, just for a brief moment for us, to a little deeper level from independence to this idea of dependence, to get below the surface to the idea of, oh, wow, where's our soul in this? From a national, more large level down to the very heart issue, um, independence is something that can be a very huge blessing for a nation. But independence, listen carefully to me, can be destructive for the soul. One of these is, I want you to listen. Independence can be a blessing, can be for a nation, but it's destructive for the soul. You can have, or we cannot have, a free nation without free souls. It's impossible to have a free nation without free souls. The very nature of having a free nation, the only way a free nation will continue to grow is if the souls of that nation are free. And there's only one thing that frees a soul. It's the power of Jesus and what he did for us. And so I hope you'll take that and and think about that, especially this day, if you do get into conversation about our nation and everything, and it's time for the church to wake up to understand this again, right? Politics is important. Faith is more important. Politics can never change a soul. You can only do so much. And by the way, politics can never continue to allow freedom to go in a nation. And again, we could go quote after quote of our founding fathers that say when faith, democracy only works among a people who trust in God, who depend on God. It will quickly be eroded if there isn't an elevation. The church doesn't wake up and realize our priority is not politics. Our priority is freeing people's souls. And when that happens, guess what? You can have the platform, a foundation for a free nation. Does that make sense, gang? And we've got to get our priority right as a church again, right? And, uh, and our celebration is the, we are reaping the benefits, though we could argue, I'm not going to get into it this morning, that some of that freedom is fading away. And it will fade quick in comparison to history if there isn't an understanding of our soul. And so I, I give that to you today to think about, all right, is, it is, we cannot have a free nation without free souls. And folks, the joy of the good news is we have the answer to that, right? Only Jesus frees souls. Only Jesus brings freedom. So it's for freedom I've come. For freedom I've set you free. The gospel is the only thing that truly sets the grace, the mercy, the glory of God that truly sets, right, uh, someone free. And that's the good news. That's the celebration. So Independence Day really should come down to this idea of this celebration of, of what God has done for us, right, in, in being uh, as saving us so that we're dependent on God so that we might have, right, and, and nurture this incredible blessing of freedom, right, in this, in this world. And 
And again, I, I would sit down and challenge anyone that would, would contradict that to understand how does freedom, real freedom, maintain. Just study the history of the world. If people's hearts aren't changed, it is impossible for a nation to continue in freedom. It's impossible. No time, in, there's no expression in history, right? We quickly, right, move towards harsh and, and terrible systems, right, in the history of the world. So here's what we need to remember is that, um, folks, God is in control. We need to re- remember God is in control. Right, even this morning, as we celebrate what's going on today, what we have experienced in this nation, we need to just remember the Lord's in control. Ultimately, He has a plan, a glorious plan. And so I want listen very carefully to this is Jesus has come to this earth. His first visit to this earth, He went to the cross. He died for the sins of the world to set souls and hearts free. And he left a mission, he left his church to be a community of people who, who, who live in the expression of this soul-freeing uh, gospel, right? The good news that is offered to the world, a free gift to come, the breaking through, right? The powers of religion to set our souls free, to understand the grace of God, his free forgiveness if we'll put our faith in him. He came the first time to set souls free. Listen carefully, Jesus is returning. And when he returns again, as he promised, as we're going to see, he comes to set the world free. Now, this is important to understand. The world can only experience freedom when God is ultimately in control. And this is God's purpose but he realizes this first he needs to set the soul free. He needs to do the inner heart work. And this is the mission of the church around the world, right, is bringing this good news to the souls of people to prepare preparedness for his return when he makes all things, unites heaven and earth, and brings freedom, true freedom, to all the nations of the world. And this is why he over and over again says, I'm returning. And the whole book ends of the Bible, the Christian thing ends with, uh, the, the, the premise that come Lord Jesus, come, come, bring it all, bring ultimate freedom, right, and harmony, right, to, to the world. And so this morning, um, I want us just to think, I'll just give you a few questions, hope you'll type them in or write them down or think about them, but I just want to ask this question, through this last year especially, have we become more dependent on God this last year, or have we grown more in independence away from God? And folks, this goes all the way back to the garden. It's the beginning of history. It's something across culture, across the world we we deal with. Uh, Back to the garden, right? Adam and Eve, right? It was no God. We're going to live independently. We're going to do it our way. We can somehow, right, live life and somehow we can buy this lie that we as humans can can make this world a better place without God. That's the source of, of all of our problems in the history of the world is this idea of saying, God... We can do this, and I would advocate it's the source of problems in all of our life, right? That we say to God, I can do this without you, God. Yeah, I can figure this out. I can morally figure out things and, and do it without you, God. And, and I think we all could give testimony of the times in our life where we just kind of shunned God and said, no, I'm going to do this my own way, and, you know, it doesn't turn out well. And especially when that takes hold in a whole nation, it does not turn out well, or whether it be the history of the world, and, and I would just, again, come to anyone to the table, show me anywhere in the history of the world, we can go back as far as you want, where a nation of people shunned God's word, his way, and did it ever go well? Has there ever been a nation, a healthy nation, a healthy structure, a healthy society that ever shunned God, ever in the history of the world, that has lasted? No, the answer is simply no, is we quickly see that independence, right, brings a, a, a terrible right, destructive uh, way. And so I, I just, uh, you know, think about this is, boy, and I would advocate this last year that in many ways we have not. We've scattered. And in many ways we actually have moved into more independent safety, security, kind of holding up, bearers with people and other things rather than a dependence on God. And I've advocated it before. I think this last year, the church radically failed and showed its weakness in who we really trust in, in multiple ways in how we responded, right, in this last year. We need a wake-up call. And the question comes, are we ready? Ultimately, are we ready? And, and uh, that's 
what I want us to dive into this this morning just briefly and give a couple of things to think about is how dependent am I on God? How do I know that I'm growing in dependence on God or growing more independently, buying the lie that I can do this on my own? I don't need God. Um, how do I know? And, um, and this idea that dependence is readiness. I'm ready for Jesus' return. I'm ready for whatever comes in history um, the simple answer to that is, well, am I dependent on God? Am I growing in dependence on God? Then I know I'm growing in my readiness for whatever comes my way in life, in history, and ultimately in death and in Jesus' return. Is Am I growing in dependence on God? So with that said, let me just pray for us as we get into the word of God. Matthew 24 is where we're going to jump in this morning. Father, thank you, Lord, for your word. And Lord, we come to you. And Lord, we thank you for this nation. We thank you for the incredible foundation and blessings that we have, have experienced, Father God. The greatest level of affluence ever to be on the face of the earth, Lord. And yes, we have with all of our failures, Lord. Um, we repent of those, Lord. We recognize those. Help us to move out of those, Lord, and not to repeat those. But Lord, thank you for the opportunity as a nation to do more blessing throughout the world than any other nation in the history of the world. We thank you, Lord. May you multiply that. And Lord, we thank you for all those who have, have suffered. If we honor them, Lord, who have given their lives, Lord, to uphold this place and, and this country and this level of life and freedom that we've been able to live in. And Father, we want to honor you most and foremost in sending your son to suffer Lord, to free our souls, to free our hearts, Lord, the real answer, nothing is really changed until the heart is changed. And Jesus, it is only you who can do that, can set the soul free, truly free, to be right with you, God. Holy Spirit, pray you'll move this morning, encourage us, awaken us, rock us, Lord. Let's be overwhelmed, Lord. And Father, I pray that you will move in us this morning and reveal to us this, this idea of dependence, Lord, and really think deeply about how are we moving? Are we moving more close to you, Father? Are we moving hardened and buying lies that we can do it without you? Reveal your word to us. Speak to us, Jesus. Father, I pray for an increase of, of hunger today among your people. Lord, let's start in the church. A hunger for your word, God. A hunger for your word to hear your voice. And Holy Spirit, I pray you'll move now. Come and speak powerfully, Lord, your word into our hearts. Each of our hearts here this morning and, and to everybody watching online. Lord, speak, Lord. We are listening. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 All right, Matthew, um, I'm going to actually step back a couple verses uh, to verse 37 this morning. This is toward the end, obviously, of Jesus' ministry. He's, uh, I think this is probably, most scholars have said this is the last time he actually enters the temple in Jerusalem. And uh, he says in verse 37, he, he's just, just, I want to bring us into the magnitude of what Jesus is saying here. He says, oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city that kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to it. How often I would have gathered your children together. Don't miss that. God's hard to gather. Gathered your children together. A hen gathers her, her broad under her wings and you were not willing. See, your house is left to you desolate. For I tell you, you will not see me again until you say, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Moving on 24, Jesus left the temple and he was going away when his disciples came to him um, and, and to point out to him the buildings of the temple. Look how amazing. It was one of the amazing wonders, the beautiful uh, pieces of architecture and, and, and history and everything else in the world. And, but he answered them and he said, you see all these, do you not? The stones, the temple, mount, everything. Truly I say to you, there will not be left here one stone upon another that will not be thrown down. And as he sat on the Mount of Olives, so he left Jerusalem with his disciples, which was his habit of discipleship. And he would go up on the east side to the Mount of Olives and he would sit in the garden there and he would teach his disciples. And from there, you can look down and right into uh, the temple. And he sat on the Mount of Olives with his disciples came to him privately. And they were saying, tell us, when will these things be? And what will be the sign of your coming 
and of the end of the age. So a couple things here, folks, is uh, the magnitude of what transition just happened here is huge. And I don't have time. We're in this series. We'll get more into this. But the transition from the physical temple itself as being the place where God's people gathered in the presence of God um, transitioned now, if you know your New Testament and the gospel, right, is God's amazing work of putting his, his spirit in and we become the temple. God desires to dwell in us and have relationship with us. And when the church and when God's people gather together, that is, right, the new temple. And he, he goes out on mission. He desires his good news not just to be among the Jewish peoples, not just to be be in Jerusalem where people worship, but unto the ends of the earth, to all nations and people, right, of the world. And that was given to Israel way back in the Old Testament, but they rejected that. And as we see, Jesus says, you're always rejecting the prophets. In other words, they were always hardened to the voice of God, always hardened to those bringing the message of good news and the mission of God, and they kept hardening. And folks, after a while, if we or a nation hardens their hearts, guess what? Time is done. God moves in with judgment. And folks, this is just one of many, I tell you the magnitude, there's no other book on the face of the earth like the Bible. No other book on the face of the earth within its pages are written prophecy that's fulfilled in history perfectly. And Jesus has over 300 things that he fulfills himself of Old Testament prophecies given hundreds of years before. The value and magnitude of this book is truly is God's word. And here we have a big one. Jesus tells him clearly, he says, no, and, and I would just step back and I would just say, don't miss him, folks. I mean, what, a, what an amazing, what a, a, a terrible thing, right? That Jesus is saying, coming into Jerusalem, and he said, oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem. This is the final, day. This, is, this is where it, it's done. There's a big transition happening here. How I longed, this is the heart of God. I longed, and you take this over the whole Old Testament. Look how patient God was with these people. Over and over again, the prophet sent, wake up, people, wake up, turn to me. And in history, just read the Old Testament, it just shows the hardening of the, the independence that took over. We can do it without you, God. We're going to do it our own way. We're not going to listen to your word. And to this point where Jesus says, my heart is broken. And think, take, here's the image. You have the temple where God, we're supposed to meet people. Jesus is physically what? The presence of God. God himself is walking in the temple. He's there and they missed him. They missed him. They missed his presence. And he said, how I longed. God's heart is to gather, to be with his people. And he sent, Jesus is coming, right? He's about to die on the cross so that we can be with him, so that our hearts, our lives can be truly set free, right? To be in fellowship with him. But they missed him. And he goes on and he says, this place, and this is where the judgment comes, it's over. There's a radical transition. This message is going out among, with, to the church, to the ends of the earth, and we'll get more into this in this as we dive into this study, the, the details of all this, of under, how to really understand this from a historical standpoint, right, of what is going on and the role of the church today. Uh, but you missed it. But then he says, you will not see me again until you say, blessed is he comes in there. So when Jesus' second return, as I said, he comes back a second time, what? To bring freedom to this world. To bring all the nations together submitted to him with beautiful, loving, healed, a reunion of heaven and earth on this earth together as God's original intent was all the way back in the beginning, right under the creation itself. And so he walks out of the temple and um, by the way, just you might write down Psalm uh, 127 and it says, unless the Lord builds the house, the laborers labor in vain. Right, that, that's just truth, that's prophecy. Unless the Lord builds the house, just add anything, unless the Lord builds my, my house and my family, I labor in vain. If I think I can do this, if I think I can build a healthy house that's gonna last without God, ain't gonna happen. Put anything in the house. If you think you can build a healthy nation without God, you're gonna labor in vain. It's gonna fall and tumble like every nation in the world in our history. If America thinks that it can stand without building right with God, unless the Lord builds it, Labors, labor. We will be in more in vain seeing what has been experienced disappear quickly, quickly. 
We have to open up and, and look at history. We're advocating things in our culture today, folks, that there is no vision for. That's what I ask people. Why are you voting for that? Why are you so committed to that when there's no vision of what that's going to bring? No time in history you find a nation at all. There is no expression in history of a healthy nation that has a, a vision of what our nation is saying we need to move towards. There's no vision except something very ugly. The things we're advocating now, we clearly know those things destroyed nation after nation. It's like, what, what, where's, the, where's the lie? Why are we not awakened to that? And again, until the soul is radically changed, right? there is no freedom. Freedom moves from the inside out. It does not move from politics and legislation into people's souls. I could apply this to anything, folks, whether it's morality, racism, all these things. Man, unless a person's heart's changed, you can't legislate it. A legislation does not change a person's soul. It'll help move things around, but it will not change a nation or people's souls, right? And so Jesus is on this journey, and the disciples are like, what is going on here? You can just see them talking among each other. They're going to the, to the, to the all of it discourse, and Jesus, and you know, they're talking, Peter, go ask him, you know, uh, what, what is going on? When is this going to happen? And um, they walked in discipleship with him. Remember, he asked them, lay down your nets, follow me. They understood dependence. They understood he has the words of life, right, in eternity. And, um, and so they sat down, and they asked him these questions. When is this going to happen? When is this going to happen? And I think what we see here is this beautiful picture of dependence. And folks, that's what we should be doing, right? Abiding in the vine. John 15, there's a part of Jonathan Stephanie's prayer. Is this abide on the vine? Just says you're the branches. You're only going to bear fruit. You're only going to truly thrive in everything that God created you to be if you stay dependent on that branch, on the vine, right? The life flow of God into you, right? Through the gospel of, of Jesus, and so, um, with that said, these, just one, this one will leave us with this morning, just with some practical, just four questions. You want to say, well, God, how do I know that I'm growing more dependent on God or that I'm growing more independent? And um, it just four, things, four questions for us. The first one, are we loving Jesus, trusting him to bring our salvation to completion? Folks, are we loving Jesus? Do you love him more this year than you did last? How do you know that you love him? You obey him. You can't say you love him if you don't obey him. I can't say that I love him if I'm, not obeying, if I'm not in his word and obeying, trying to submit my life to his word. I cannot say I'm loving him. And folks, I was just, this is a big question for all of us. What are we loving? What are we loving? What has a hold of our, our affections, our heart? And, and, and am I growing more in my, my understanding of the immense love God has for me, what Jesus did for me? Right, wiped my sin away, covered it up with the blood of Christ, set me free. All right, I, I'm not bound by religion anymore. I'm not bound by the law anymore. I'm free before him by faith. He's made this. He's made, if you know Jesus, he's made your soul a temple of God where the presence of God will come and have fellowship Intimacy, fulfilling, folks, by the way, every deep question you have in life. Maybe you've never gotten there. But every deep question that people have in their life, down, if we go deep enough in my soul, it, it comes down, it's all the same for everybody. Am I loved? Do I have a purpose? Do I have significance in this vast universe? How did I show up here? How did, how did I get this DNA? All these questions Jesus answers and only he can answer because he's the one who breathed you into play. He's the one who created you the very image of God to have an intimate relationship with him right? And so I have to start there. Am I loving him? Am I loving him? And am I growing in that? Am I more and more understanding of, of boy, Lord, I, I'm trusting you to complete the promises that you talk about here for my life. This is where it begins. The second one is, am I leaning on Jesus, right, for my decision making? How about decision making? If I want to really answer the question of, am I growing in dependence on God? It comes right down to how do I make decisions? Am I just saying, this is what I want to do? This is the decision I want to make. And I'm going to make it. And we've all been there, but folks, this is deep water. I cannot say that I'm growing in dependence on God and experiencing his blessings in my life unless I'm coming to him. No matter what the decision is, Lord, um, I ask you, what is honoring to you? What would you have me do in this situation? Business deal, 
relational decision, a financial decision, whatever it is, 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 and even what I do with my day. Lord, I wake up in the morning. Thank you, Lord. Your mercies are new every morning. All right, I'm alive. I'm awake. I give you thanks for that, God. What would you have me do? I'm yours today. To be a faithful steward at my job, to be faithfully serving my family, my, my wife, and, and others, and to love my neighbor. And uh, uh, Lord, help me, right? Today, I lay it before you, right? Are we growing in that understanding? Am I leaning into him? I love that imagery, right, of John. The, it says he just leaned in. He was a beloved disciple because he just leaned in physically. He, he couldn't get enough of Jesus, right? And, and are we growing that way? Lord, I need to hear from you. I need to hear your word, God. I don't want to step out in this decision unless I have your word. And, and, to, and that opens up a whole avenue of how do I make decisions? Well, I, I not only lean to him and his word, but I lean into others, the body of Christ, other believers in my life. Or are we coming to others? Hey, pray with me on this. I need to hear from God. Pray with me, right? Community of God's people. The temple, folks, is where God's presence is, where he speaks to his people. Why is it important that we and our children are among God's people? Because guess what? God specially speaks his word into our lives. Not just these words, but specific words of direction and conviction in our lives when we need to hear him specifically, lovingly into the details of our life. Right? Make sense? This is the place when we gather together. Right? And don't, don't miss this, folks. I, I, and I've hammered this right this last year, so I'm going to keep hammering it. What does God say? Jesus is standing in the temple, and he says, how often, this is God speaking, how often I have longed to gather you together in my presence so I may bless you. Folks, we need to heed that. This is consistent command, do not forsake gathering together. You cannot grow in dependence unless you do. And because God's presence is there, and that should trump everything, right? Should that, that should go over, every, and I don't mean to use that word, by the way, but <laughs> that should go over everything. We've got to change that word, right? So uh, does that make sense, gang? Is that, that, should, that should change everything, right? And so are we leaning into Jesus, right, for decision-making? Third one. Folks, are we linking to Jesus' body, the church? And this is, we've, we just said it, right? Man, if, you know, all through the scripture, the expression to, of the blessings of God, it is dependent on the body's ability to be together, to pray together, to love one another, to support one another, to push one another on to what God has for us. And so this idea of being dependent on God, well, I have to ask, wow, am I, am I growing more dependent? Am I linking, right, to his body, to the body of believers together? And I would just stop and say this very practical thing is please let us help you get connected. There's a little connecting card in the seat back in front. And please, just it, we would love to hear from you. Write that down there. And you could just write it simply, I, hey, I just help me get connected. We've got all kinds of avenues to get connected, right, to the body for support and encouragement that's going on up and down this valley. And uh, let us help you get linked to the body of Christ, especially coming out of this time of great fracturing, right? Great isolation, great independence out there is to come back. Lord, restore your people to be the family you called us to be, right? And folks, the last one is just, are we longing for Jesus' return? It comes down to that. And I know for all of us, you know, especially being the most affluent people on the face of earth, this is a battle. Because in the midst of comfort, in the midst, midst of affluence, guess what? is we begin to very subtly love our life, love our world, love Aspen in the 4th of July, right? And, and, and we forget that, you know, there's something better coming. You know, folks, no matter what affluence level we gain in this life, do you know there's something so far beyond that's so far better, so radically better out there that God has for us, that he's bringing to us. And this is why over and over again, we're to long for his return. Right? We're to long for his return. And, and if I don't have, if I'm not growing in my, Lord, come, Lord Jesus. Just come, Lord, please. Unite all things in heaven and on earth together. Bring freedom to your creation. Then I have to question whether I'm growing in dependence on him or not. And folks, by the way, those first three 
lead the way to the last four. You're not going to successfully, I'm not going to cons- be able to successfully grow my longing for Jesus' return unless I'm doing the first three. They all are dependent on each other, right? And this idea of longing, right, for our Lord's return. He's in control. He's coming back. The question, folks, is are we ready? Are we ready? And folks, I, I just want to take us back because maybe that's just a little shocker, rocks you out of kind of your wor- world view or whatever it is, but I just want to bring us back down to some history. Do you realize that Jesus says specifically in about, at about 30, I don't know, 30, uh, uh, whenever it was, 33 AD, he said to his disciples, look at that temple. It's getting ready to be destroyed. And there's going to be a whole new thing that happens with my church around the world. In 70 AD, the Romans, just a few years later, the Romans rolled in under Titus' leadership and they leveled Jerusalem. The battle went on for close to four years. A million Jews died. 100,000 were taken in slavery. It was one of the most horrific. The Romans starved the people out. They went to cannibalism. It was dark. It was tribulation. And this temple itself was raised. That is history. That is fulfillment of God's word. Over and over again, he is true to his word, right? We must listen to it, heed it, and we must be ready and embrace it. And that is dependent on our dependence, right, on on God. And so I hope you'll take this, these things and this Independence Day, go a little deeper, Right? Independence is a beautiful thing right? in the world. But when it comes to your soul, when it comes to my soul, it's a destructive thing to be and to live independently. God calls us to grow in dependence on him. And then and only then can real freedom reign right? in, this, in this world. And so um, let me just pray for us, gang. And, and I'm just gonna invite us. Derek, y'all come on up. And um, as we close this time out and get ready to go out and celebrate and, in our community, I, I just hope that, that we'll end with coming to communion. And folks, communion as we come, Jesus said, unless you drink my blood, unless you take of my body the bread, you have no life. You have no life. So communion is not some religious ritual thing that we do. This is life. This is an expression of our utter dependence on God and our celebration of his immense love for us, of what he's given, his broken body and his shed blood for us that we might have life right in him and true freedom that is rooted right inside our, inside our soul. So Father, we come to you and uh, Lord, may we heed your word. May we be a people, Lord, who grow in our hunger for your word, our dependence on you, God, Lord, you're an amazing God. You're after us. You're so patient with us, God. But Lord, I, I just think what Jesus, as he told the people, I, 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 just, I, I say these words across our nation, Lord, you, how long you have longed to gather your people together to bless them, Lord. Father, may we get a real wake-up call, Lord, among your church in this nation, Lord. Father, prepare our hearts as we come to your table now. May we just have a little time to rest and, and Lord, to really wrestle with our soul and convict us, Holy Spirit. Awaken us, Lord. Father, may the joy, the joy of depending on you come alive, Lord. And we rejoice in what you've done to set us free this morning, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Come, Holy Spirit, now and Just move, just in a special way, speak inside our souls, Lord, for your glory, God. We love you. In Jesus' name.